Law Journal. And I wanted to welcome everybody here tonight as we honor our 2011 Leaders in the Law. We are honored to be able to celebrate members of Wisconsin's legal community who have made outstanding contributions to our state's justice system, to the practice of law, and to the communities in which they live. This year we received over 75 nominations, which tells us that despite the challenges of the past few years, the legal industry in Wisconsin is still going strong, and there are a lot of people doing significant work. We're thrilled to honor them and celebrate them tonight. It's time to honor our Lifetime Achievement Award winners. In reviewing our nominations, there were four individuals who, through their body of work, have had and continue to have a significant impact on the practice of law in Wisconsin. We are honored to celebrate their successful careers here tonight, and now our first Lifetime Award recipient. Our first recipient is Bruce Davidson, a retired partner with Corals and Brady. Throughout the 40 years of his corporate finance and securities practice, he represented clients large and small. He handled transactions worth billions of dollars, led the firm's corporate finance securities team, and still found time to give back to the profession and to the community. He is quick to note that the largest transactions are not always the most difficult. In addition to the help he provided corporate clients, Davidson has taken time to give back to the profession through his work on state bar and American Bar Association committees. He also has served on the planning and executive committees at the Ray Garrett Jr. Corporate and Securities Law Institute held at Northwestern School of Law since 1984. Davidson's efforts have gone beyond the legal profession and into the community as he has guided Quarles United Way campaign. Last year he helped the firm raise $500,000 for United Way. Congratulations Bruce Davidson for your lifetime of work and your continued commitment to helping our community. Our next Lifetime Award recipient is Judge Charles Dykeman of the Wisconsin Court of Appeals. After serving on the Court of Appeals from its inception in 1978 until retiring last year, Judge Dykeman now serves on the faculty at the University of Wisconsin Law School, teaching an elective course on methodology and negligence cases. Few judges or scholars have spent as much time and thought attempting to resolve the problematic issues of the element of duty in Wisconsin negligence law than Judge Dykeman. Perhaps not coincidentally, the final opinion he wrote as a Court of Appeals judge this summer, after 32 years on the bench, dealt with just that issue. Dykeman has also been a frequent lecturer on the issue over the years, speaking to bar associations and other judges at the state's judicial conference. He also joined the Board of Bar Examiners after retiring from the court, writing questions for and grading the answers of aspiring attorneys. In addition, he serves on a BBE committee looking into alternatives to the bar exam. Keeping his schedule full was part of his plan, he said, not wanting to give up the law when he retired from the bench. Congratulations, Judge Dykeman, on your outstanding judicial career. When the law journal called and told him that they had the wrong guy, <laughs> over the years I've had uh, an excellent legal secretary who has kept me literate, uh, a number of law clerks, some of whom are here tonight, who have kept me honest, and a group of colleagues uh, who would not let me write everything I wanted to write. Those are the ones who deserve Robert Habish had always planned to follow his father's footsteps and become an attorney, but circumstances led to a dramatic deviation from one particular part of that plan. Originally, he had intended to be a tax or business lawyer and was studying for his CPA exam and had taken some interviews in Chicago when his father suffered a heart attack. His father, a general practitioner in Milwaukee, who had started his firm in 1930, needed help with his practice while recovering. So Havish jumped in and found a new career path as he was forced to quickly prepare for a number of automobile injury cases. In the beginning, he said he didn't win any cases, but after gaining more experience, he met with a string of successes in the 1960s. At that time, none of the insurance companies or defense lawyers took me all that seriously, Havish says. They thought I was just lucky. So I really got offers that would even allow me to consider settlement. Defense counsels quickly learned to take him seriously. After a series of significant victories, over the years, Habish, Habish & Rotier has become known as a powerhouse firm that has won multiple multi-million dollar awards. While Habish doesn't spend as much time in the courtroom now as he did when he was building his firm, he still enjoys playing an active role. Congratulations, Robert Havish, on your distinguished and ongoing legal career. I want to thank the Wisconsin Law Journal for this honor. I want to congratulate all the honorees tonight. But any kind of career, and all you lawyers know this, you have to have a good team. And I've been very lucky to have such a wonderful law firm 
that I've worked with for over 50 years, and that's the reason for success for all the lawyers, and I've had wonderful partners, so I want to thank them for showing up in force tonight, and uh, all I can say is it's been a hell of a trip. Our final Lifetime Achievement honoree is Joseph Melly of Melly Law in Madison. Melly, one of the state's most highly regarded management attorneys, remembers a case he had where his client was going up against the Teamsters in 1951. It was a David versus Goliath case. No one prevailed over the Teamsters in 1951, he said, but it taught him the importance of shunning ideologies and simply judging each case by its merits. Over time, his firm has grown from two lawyers to 17. Although labor and employment law remains the firm's mainstay, it has expanded into business and civil litigation, as well as school, construction, family law, and estate planning. Melly, now 87, still comes into the office daily to provide of counsel advice. He also helped create the Dane County Bar Association's mentorship program, which began in 2006. Now called the Joseph A. Melly Mentorship Program, it annually matches 10 new attorneys with 10 experienced attorneys to help get those new to the bar on their feet. In addition, Melly is the president of the State Bar's Senior Lawyers Division, where he is currently organizing a program entitled Transition to Retirement from Law Practice. Congratulations, you are a leader in the law.